when I started Neo, we had uh, basically three ways of, of talking to the database. We have the uh, 2J Java APIs, and uh, through Tinkerpop, um, they have Gremlin. And we felt that the Java API allows you to do a lot of stuff, but it's very difficult to look at the code and, and see what you're actually doing from it. Um, and Gremlin is um, very nice, but it's a, a imperative, a prescriptive way of doing graph queries instead of kind of. There are some. Yeah. It's 50-50. <laughs> um, my background is uh, SQL GBA, and uh, I wanted something much, much easier than, than what we had. So, so, yeah, I mean, basically, it's not to criticize these two. I mean, certainly you want to use both of these query methods, still, you know, the things that are really good in a lot of situations. It was really that, for us, they weren't meeting that, that bar of being simple enough um, for the common kind of queries that we saw people do. So it's about it's not about a limitation of those query methods, it's about the simplicity that they have. Yeah, we want that first fix to be easy to get stuff. So coming from a SQL background, I, I started looking how could I how could we do something like OLDB do and, and make SQL work for graph queries. Um, I still have some ideas that we could go that way, but we haven't, and uh, I'm pretty happy where we are right now. Um, SQL is, um, so while querying a graph database, in real time at least, uh, I have very little experience with graph processing. And Paths are a very, very critical component to, to uh, have in mind. To have as a first class citizen. But SQL doesn't have that. And also, <coughs> once you get paths, you, you don't know the length of them, which is like breaking the first normal form of SQL. You have something that contains a, a bunch of elements, you don't know how many of them. Um, and also, Neo4j is schema free, so we didn't have any types to do uh, from cars or from persons. So that was a good. And finally, we look at Sparkle and, and look what it could do. Um, and it's 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 designed for a different problem. It's it tries to solve something that that we didn't see our users um, were doing. We we had a different problem that we were trying to solve. And also, the data model is different. Everything's triple to in Sparkle. Um, we have properties, we have stuff that Sparkle doesn't support. So uh, we're going to talk about, we want to give you like an overview of what is in, um, the what is in Cypher, but we're not going to take it from the point of view of, um, you know, here's, here's, a, here's a getting started guide or here's a tutorial of using Cypher, because those things you know, they're already out there, you can, they're easy to come by, we've sort of done that a lot of times before. Um, because we're all graph specialists here, we're not having to explain what graphs are, that's a really nice kind of audience. So we can go a little bit deeper and, and say, well, why did we make some decisions in Cypher as we developed it? And hopefully that will give you a, a good flavour for, you know, whether it, whether it fits for the kind of problems you're, you're trying to solve. Um, so here's some design areas that uh, we, we going to talk about, um, and uh, just give like a caveat overview of the whole thing. So I'd go dive straight in. Um, the first one to look at is that Cypher is, is declarative. So we've looked at a few different um, ways of querying. We've talked about quite a few different ways of querying this morning already. Some of them imperative, some of them um, declarative. So uh, I think we made the uh, classical way you know, those uh, declarative ways of doing things that you can put a in, we find that to be imperative, but um, very 
high level, the, 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 this, it's a fundamental like, philosophical uh, difference between uh, two points of theory, just the same way as a philosophical difference between styles and program. Um, and there's a trade off in going either direction. The cipher, we wanted to create something that was declarative. So we don't use words like uh, following a relationship as an action. We don't talk about breadth first as a depth first. Instead, what we, what we do is specify some inputs and some rules, so starting points and the desired outcome, like what you want to find. And then we leave it up to the execution engine to decide how to, how to meet those goals we've set it. So we're not saying, we're not having to write the code to, we're not, the user doesn't have to write the code to how to walk the graph. Um, so, after being declarative, the next most core cool pattern, the most, most core cool concept in Cypher is that it's based on pattern matching. So I'm just going to I'm going to give a really basic example of pattern matching. Um, here's, a, here's a graph that we drew uh, yesterday. Um, you can tell we drew it by hand. It's a little bit wonky, um, but uh, it's simple enough for our example. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to pretend we're running a query in this graph. We're not going to use any kind of real example. We're going to uh, have we're going to pretend that we're looking for a pattern that's like this. Um, so in this pattern. Um, I'm gonna, I want to find triangles with nodes. I want to find um, a node that has two out uh, relations that point to two nodes which are themselves connected together. Um, so this is a really simple example, but it's simple enough that we can show it on the picture uh, conveniently. We've also given names to these nodes so that we can reason about them in more detail later. So they're called A, B, and C. Okay, so. This is this is the this is the model for how we're going to run this query. Uh, we're going to start off by uh, using a, a naming service or, or an index um, to find starting points in the graph. So the start of the query is not a graph operation; it's a, it's a lookup operation to go to um, a number of starting points. So uh, this is commonly when we uh, we look up. Uh, you know, a node or a number of nodes that have a certain property, we use the seen index for that gender in the MJ, um, and you, you, you start off with a set of starting nodes. So these are all the things that match our criteria of A in the graph, there's three of them. Okay, the, the next thing we have to do uh, to match this pattern uh, is well, we start from uh, one of the nodes, and we find, oh look, starting from this green one, we do have uh, a pattern matching there. We've got two uh, you can see the two um, out relationships here, and they they uh, refer to nodes that are themselves connected. Great. Uh, let's look at the next pattern. There it is. Um, and yeah, we've we exhausted all the patterns on the first node. When we introduce the third match, what we see is that we've got um, two nodes, this one and this one, that are shared between uh, that are in common with other patterns. But they still form part of the pattern they were just found in. So we're going to end up returning three triplets of nodes here, even though they only contain uniquely uh, six nodes. So uh, some of the nodes come out of that. We call this, this is a matching subgraph. We're going to use that word later. Um, notice that there was one starting node that we found over here that didn't have any patterns matching. So we found three starting nodes, three patterns, but they don't all come from different starting nodes. Okay, that's pattern matching, pretty simple stuff. Uh, next up is how to actually, well, Sorry. see, see so coding is quite hot. Um, next up is how to actually write this down. So we've got our, our queries, this thing up here, this ABC. How do we, uh, how do you write it down? Well, um, what we've gone for uh, is what we call our ASCII art patterns. So you have to uh, bear with us here. So imagine uh, a graph like this. This is a really, really simple graph. Pattern. Oh, sorry, really simple pattern. <coughs> um, what we do is we write it like this. Um, so what you have to do is, if, you, if you'd like me to take your glasses off, and you, you, you have a bit blurry eyes, and, and if, you're, if you're really out of focus, you can imagine that these, especially in this font, that this is a bit like a circle, and what we're trying to do is make a picture 
in the language. So yeah, you've drawn it on a piece of paper, you've drawn it on your whiteboard, and then you can just like type in what's on the whiteboard. That's the, the you know, that's the, the, the cheesy concept. Um, and it's a, it's a double, it's a, it's a double arrow, um, just to make it a little bit longer, because that's how long. <laughs> um, next up, what we do is we give these nodes names. Um, and this, this is uh, like bound variables in our pattern. So uh, when we give names to uh, the nodes in the pattern, we can then do further reasoning on those nodes to, you know, to further qualify or to do other relationships from them. Um, so we want to draw this in the pattern, we simply put the, the names in the parentheses. Um, once we get to this stage, we actually optionally you can get rid of the parentheses. If you don't care about this you know, blurry eyes thing, you, know, you just get rid of those. You know, just a, a arrow B is good enough. Uh, we have relationship types, so um, here we've got a loves uh, relationship, that's a good one. Um, uh, maybe from the main example this morning, it's an appropriate relationship type. Um, when we represent this, we put uh, the, a label into the middle of the arrow. So this is a bit, this is the same arrow that we saw earlier, but we've expanded it with a square bracket, we've used a, um, like a ruby-like uh, colon identifier for that for to go in front of the label and this says only match A's connected to B's by a, a relationship type love so if we had some other relationship type between them that wouldn't be a match uh, you can put more stuff in the brackets that's yeah. why we have the colon yeah it becomes more it becomes like a place and you can put more and more qualifications there. Does it matter if the relationship type is dynamic or static? I mean, uh, no. At, at the database level, that's that that distinction goes away. All right, cool. It could be a, a parameter, so you can use the same query and then, as a parameter, use this relationship type. Okay. Um, so, so far our pattern is trivially small. What happens when we add another node? So here we've got a path of A to B to C. Um, <laughs> The obvious, we just can chain them together in our, um, in our ASCII <coughs> art pattern, just like the, the picture. Simple so far. What about our real example, or our, or like this? Well, this, this is this is kind of harder because it's not in a line. So our ASCII is going to break down now. Um, well, it's not too hard. We all we have to do is separate the parts of this with a comma, so we could. Um, have a, a, a number of different things that together form a single pattern. Um, I wrote this and then uh, Andrew's put it out, oh, you don't have to write it like that, you can write it in one list, I was like, oh, of course you can. So you can also write this uh, as one single chain because of course the arrows don't have to go forwards and because we've got bound variables on those, uh, on those nodes, we know that the A is the same A even though it's the opposite end of the chain. So this, this at the bottom does define that same triangle. Um, okay, well, so far uh, it's, it's all been things we can draw in the picture. Now we kind of go, we stretch it a bit further, things we can't really draw on a picture. So how about uh, variable length relationships? <coughs> so I want a pattern that will match any of these three. So it will match A connected to B, or A connected to another thing, to be connected to be, or any number of intermediate nodes in between. So in this case, what we do is uh, the most convenient way to type this in is with a um, is just have a have a, a, an operator like um, in like a regular expression kind of is what we might remind you of. We have as many relationships as we like intermediate between those two nodes, um, and this is really handy for you can imagine lots of graph situations. You just want to say find me any, any connection between these two things in the, in the right direction, following the same uh, relationship type. We can also add which relationship type to follow that way. Like how, many, how many steps max or minimum we want to yeah. follow. So like parent of or kind of containment like um, relationships are the, are the way you very commonly use this, um, as well as in the, so uh, like a hierarchical structure um, it's perfect for this kind of thing, as well as the more, you know, most people think of like social networks, I think it definitely is relevant there, but it's even more relevant in a, in a hierarchical structure. Uh, just out of curiosity, what happened to the parentheses? 
Oh, so we, we the, the parentheses, they, when you have no variable, you have to have them, because otherwise you speak in space. Um, once you have a variable, you can drop them. So then they're, they're, not, they're not compulsory. They're, they're optional. They're, they're aesthetic okay. on that point. So if you, if you like rounded, if you like roundedness, you can put them in. If you, uh, if you find pressing shift a lot, okay, don't put them in. Uh, in, in this case, uh, I, I would see the sensible and maybe of, uh, also visual, visually nicer if also this, uh, this, um, this pattern that we define it to define a, 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 long, a long path, a very long path, and that it also goes round. Well, the, the other the examples that we showed before also didn't have any uh, uh, parentheses. Yeah, so like it's yeah. not just variable length. It's, any, any relationship, as long as you have a name for, for that node, you, you don't have to use parentheses. Uh, yeah, yeah, but we right. ask if you uh, can uh, left out the uh, brackets for the path. Uh, oh, square brackets. Um, yeah, either left it out or, or, or maybe it also round, because I see it's the, best, the, the same concept. That, uh, oh, yeah, nodes, yeah. Some are <laughs> square, <laughs> some are round. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take that into consideration. <laughs> okay, so uh, the next is coming from, so this is the next. So, so, oh. How can you distinguish between two nodes directly connected through any, uh, using any relationship type? Yeah. And two nodes connected to um, multiple hubs, undefined multiple hubs. Um, I mean, this tells me A is directly connected to B with any relationship. Yeah. It doesn't tell me that A is right. so you, with <coughs> so you, you just want to follow Love's relationship to Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. You just add colon, love, stop. That's it. So uh, next up, we've got some questions on the, uh, the SQL world. So in the SQL world, one of the things that you can do is you can, uh, well, in the relational world, one of the things you can do is you can outer join. You say, well, I, I want this information. I know there might also be this other information associated. If, if you have it, please, I have it back. Um, if you don't know anything about it, I want to know that you don't know. Um, so uh, this would be sort of an optional uh, construct. So here, we want all the A's, and if the A's happen to have a B connected to them, we want the B's back. So you can imagine you've got like a whole load of customers maybe, and some of them have an address and some of them don't. You're not going to talk, but uh, you imagine yourself like that. And you want to get all your customers back regardless, but if they do have an address, I'll have it back please. Um, and for this kind of situation, is that exact analogy of an alpha join, we have a, an optional relationship. So basically, once you in your pattern, once you introduce an optional relationship, any part of the pattern beyond that relationship also becomes like an optional um, subgraph. So you can then um, like you know, reason about that, reason about that part, return that part um, where where it was present in the, in the underlying graph. Correctly, then this pattern would return any nodes in both graph. No, because, because we, we always have a starting point. So this is a you have to have a starting point, and here the starting point will um, decide which parts of the pattern are optional and which are not. So if we have a bound A, so the starting point is A. We know the the node ID or the index lookup to use to find A. <clears throat> Anything hanging from the other side of the no. Anything have, have hanging from the other side of an optional relationship is also going to be optional. But we're just going to be returning A here. So this is going to be null, and this is going to be null. Okay, so uh, that was 
that was our ASCII art stuff. Um, the next feature we, we've got in here is we, we went down the route of becoming uh, you know, like functional programming, and uh, we tried as much as possible to get some some good stuff out of functional programming into the into the game. <coughs> and the one that that stands up here is to do is to be able to do closures over some of the um, data types that we get back within the, within the uh, within the query. So um, I'll, I'll explain my example domain here. Okay, so I, I've got a, a network that represents train routes, and I want to uh, see if I can get from London to Moscow um, only changing trains in capital cities. So in here, I've got this, this match here. I'm finding any... Uh, any way to get from London to Moscow with intermediate nodes representing changing trains. Um, oh, sorry, I'll stop it tonight. Okay. Start and start, yeah. So if I start and start, we've got, we're finding London uh, is a node, so we've given it an ID 1, and Moscow is a node, pretending that's ID 2. Um, and uh, then onto the, the match, which says find me all the routes between London and Moscow. So there might be lots of those. Um, and then we can save that whole path in a variable. So we can be uh, given this name path to that, that root. Um, and now we can apply, like, uh, we can, using this, uh, see this, this closure here. So this is a closure about this where city dot capital equals true is a closure bound on the context of the path. So we're, we, we're getting the path, we're extracting its nodes, and we're saying that all of those nodes have to have this certain property. Um, so th this is the kind of stuff that you do in SQL. You do this with subqueries. Um, but we think actually when we tried writing this stuff down, this actually is a so far avoided the need for any <coughs> subqueries because we're able to um, express this stuff in quite a terse, um, and still fairly easy to read way um, using this kind of uh, functional approach. So it's an interesting design decision, right? Because it's, it's like we, we, we look a bit like SQL in our clause structure, but then inside those clauses we're being quite um, a bit more functional because that's, uh, that, that makes it read very well. It lends itself very well for, for collections, which the part is just a collection of nodes and relationships. So all the functional the map, the uh, exists, all those normal tools that you use to from functional programming makes a lot of sense once you have collections in your query as well. So we came up with this language unit with the, uh, all the ASCII art and everything. Um, how uh, does it actually work? Um, we made a choice to make it a parse language, to make it an external DSL. Um, so Gremlin is, is always in a host language, um, so mostly used in, in Groovy at the moment. Um, we looked into, you know, mm. is this going to work in Java <coughs> or in a dynamic language like Groovy or, or Ruby or something, uh, or, or even in the, um, you know, even could have done Clojure or something like that. It actually, because we're going for simple, readability was paramount, and it, it actually just became a lot easier to go to a completely separate, um, to a completely separate uh, external DSL, um, and this really helps us with. So it helps us because we have totally our own execution semantics. We don't need to worry about how method chain works in the host language. Uh, we can have totally our own type system. Um, but from a kind of database point of view, it also really helps from a serialization point of view because we, we know that. Um, we, we kind of constraining people, they can't wire in their own random bits of, of host language code um, into the language, which means that we, we, we have a, a bounded system, we have a constrained system, which makes it much easier to serialize this across the wire, so to go to execute it on the server uh, remote from the client, that makes quite a big difference. And we know it's going to be portable, so we, can, we know that we, you can send a query string from any language you like, um, and we know we'll be able to go and run it on the Java end in the database. We're, we're fully aware that this does not cover all the cases that people mm. have using Neo4j. We're not aiming to do that either. We want to have that simple, simple way of querying a graph database. 
if you want to do some extra stuff, you're welcome to go down to the core API to, to do your uh, extensions and have them, them living on the server. But we're aiming for simple. That's the most important goal. Um, that's it. And you wrap the SQL um, of what? Yeah, sure. So this was a, a, a very much a, a reasoning um, decision. We, we wanted people to be able to look at a query and understand it quickly and to be able to talk with other people about their query as fast as possible. And I think that having a very limited structure to how your query will look makes that much simpler. I know that it has to be structured this way to, to, to be a cyber query. Um, so it is just like SQL, you have clauses. You have a start clause where you define your uh, starting points. You can have multiple starting points. <coughs> the match is kind of from together with the joins in SQL. Where is just where? Um, return is the select the projection. That's what you actually want out from the query. We're not going to return the whole subgraph to you. We'll return whatever bits of that subgraph that you're actually interested in and aggregate and do something. And if we, we could have made it closer to SQL. I think I mean, we had a like a, 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 you know, a, a branch where uh, was experimenting with, with just changing these keywords around so it didn't look like to all intents and purposes the same as SQL. Um, but I, I think that we you know we, we had a long discussion about it and uh, we decided to stick with these different keywords because we want to be explicit that it's not like SQL, like the semantics are significantly different and we don't want to trick people into a false sense of familiarity um, in expecting it to work the same way as SQL when it doesn't. <coughs> um, so that was an overview of our, well that was the design decisions we were going to talk about. Um, next, we've, next up we've got some implementation things at points that uh, things um, that we we can talk about. We don't have time to talk about uh, all of these by any means. But we want to see what what people are most interested in hearing about. And we'll talk about one of those first. Anyone? Anyone? Uh, Which one, sir? Yeah. Um, okay. else? Execution plan. Execution plan. Okay. Okay, which one should we start with? Let's start with execution plans because very much is much more difficult. <laughs> <laughs> to to, to from. Yeah. So, um, actually, let me start by before I, I show the next slide. Drawing a little bit. So, much like Gremlin, uh, five minutes. Yeah. yeah. Um, so much like gremlins, there are um, the internals of Cypher is just pipes hanging on each other. So um, each pipe will produce um, a number of maps. So it will produce an iterable of maps, right? And they feed into each other. They hang on. So we have a pipe that feeds into the next pipe, that feeds into the next pipe. And this one is actually the execution result that you're getting. This baby, when you start <coughs> to remember it, it will ask what it needs from the pipe underneath, which will pull lazily whatever this pipe needs to answer the question that it was asked by you, the user. So I'll, I'll show you a, a couple of examples. So this first very, very simple query, we have a start node and we want to return, nothing else. The first pipe here is the parameters pipe. So if you have any parameters in your query, they get inserted at the very bottom of the pipe hierarchy. So this is where the user will, this is the pipe that the user will see the column filter. The parameter pipe then is followed by notes, which is where we insert 
the uh, start node into the map that we will emit. And since we only have a single node, that one will emit just a single map. The extract part is pretty pointless at this stage, and the column filter, what, what that does is, while we're um, working with your query, we'll um, have a lot of variables, but the end user only want to see a, a subset of those. So the column filter strips away anything that the user is not interested in. In this case, it doesn't strip away anything. So this query, we have a start node. Um, <coughs> we want to go out from the start node as many um, steps as possible. We want to return the name property of that start node. We want to return the start node and how many nodes we found. So this is like SQL aggregation. Um, and then we want to order it, we want to sort the result set before returning it to the user. So the same start parameters, then nodes, um, and then we do the actual pattern matching, which introduces the, the map coming out of the pattern match will have n, will have the, the, uh, the path, and the end node as <coughs> entities in the map. We then extract name from one of the nodes, from, from uh, the end node, because we're going to be using it for aggregation. Um, so eager aggregation here, we're losing the, the lazy part of a cipher query, because you're doing aggregation, we can't, we can't aggregate until we have the full results in in one go. So what we'll do here is we'll eagerly load everything, group on it, do the aggregate, aggregation functions, and then we'll sort it. We'll extract H because we want to sort on H and we don't want to go to the node and, and get the property every time. So what we'll, this pipe will insert the property as something already um, solved in the map. We're just wondering about time. We should we just talk about pattern matching? Or, uh... We have one minute left. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, we'll have to talk to you later about that. Yeah, questions. Let's, let, let's do questions. Um, uh, at the beginning of the talk, you, you said Markel did not uh, uh, fulfill all your requirements, but actually, uh, after Hearing your talk, um, I don't see uh, all of your examples can also be expressed using Spacium. So, we, what are what requirements do you have? Uh, uh, it's a simple you requirement. So, I think the, the the yeah the ability to express stuff definitely <coughs> if you can do that in Sparkle. Well, what do you the, mean with uh, what expressions do you mean? So, so the, the, there is, there isn't a difference there in terms of uh, this, from what we've shown today. Um, I, I don't think there's anything that you we don't believe in anything that you can do inside that you can't do in Sparkle. But uh, it's like how easy it is to express that and how readable it is for somebody coming to the database as a as a you know a new user who's born a user. Um, that's that's what we're going for. <coughs> that's the risk. Yeah, I think there are, I mean, we, we haven't shown anything that Sparkle can't do today, but Cypher can do more stuff than what we've shown today. Uh, I think you mentioned it before. Uh, can you also specify which algorithm you want to use while traversing the graph? No. no. So you can, can't do something like shortest pass or something like that? So you can, you can do shortest path. Okay. Um, but that, that's, we haven't shown it today, but that, that's, that's basically in that same map say, find the path that is the shortest path, or one of the shortest path. So you can specify yourself. <coughs> for the, for the um, map share, you, you just add shortest to it. Yeah, so okay. it's just like a function of that. Uh, but you can it, specify a function for yourself. 
So if, if you wanted to do that, then you'd use, have to use another API. Okay. Well, it's all based on types, and types can easily be attended. Um, well, it's, 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 not the, it's not the Tinkerbox pipes. Yeah. It's, it's our own pipes. Yeah, it's first your own pipes, but it's a simple yeah. thing to extend pipes. Yeah. What about um, an API for extending the query language with user defined? Yeah, well, it's absolutely something that we've thought about. Um, it's just not right now the time for it. <laughs> Just a question. Uh, we can represent a query as a graph, as a subgraph. Yeah. Uh, can it be not connected, the query graph? Uh, so you can have, have multiple patterns, certainly, that are, are themselves not connected to each other. Um, that's like valid. In the, um, in the query pattern? Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, you could, but it wouldn't be that, like, it wouldn't be that useful. That, that's a I Cartesian like. Cartesian join. You, you, if you have two patterns that you have start points to two different patterns, you're just going to get a, a full across. It's like a, a Cartesian join between the two, which is nice but not very useful. Yeah, but Sparkle has the union, right? So you can just get two separate gra subgraphs and then make a join. But <coughs> Can do it, or because oh, you have only one starting point, so you can't. Uh, oh, no, you, know. you can have multiple starting points. Okay. Definitely. So you can, like in that in that uh, London and Moscow example, over two separate starting points. Okay. That's not. Don't look on that. So, last one. Um, so, how can you issue a cipher query from an application? So we have bindings that, that you can use or REST. So the, 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 so the bindings that give you the, the bindings for the, the, the other APIs also support Cypher. So uh, you can do that from, um, well certainly from Java, but from um, Ruby or Node.js or C Sharp or Python. Python. Yeah, Python. Uh, <coughs> lots of different languages you can send it through. Or you can just do an HTTP uh, call to the REST API. <coughs> Thank you very much, but we have to continue. <laughs>